Yo yo yo, what is going on Raiders the Boss here and today with the third episode of Beat the Boss. We are now halfway through season 2 and after this episode we'll be having one more episode to come but we still need two more players for it and one of the players from today will have the chance to get into the final match. The players of this episode are gonna be FRP Shoot vs MB Nash. Both are strong old 10 players and will face today my oldest base layout which I have designed in times when I was above 2000 Valor. I think nobody was able to hit 3 stars against this one, although people use buffs and that's why I've decided to use it in this episode. The mission of this base layout was to split the cannoneers from the marauders to make them vulnerable against the towers. This happens especially when the troops reach the gold bunkers on the side because there the marauders will stay in the center and the cannoneers will move further to the outside where I'm waiting for them with my large explosive traps. Furthermore the cannons on the side make sure that I will kill the healers early if the players does not take them out. Also, it is a base layout which is pretty reliable against dragons as skyapoons are not too close together but since we don't use them in this season that doesn't affect our players of course. Alright, these are all the basic information and for now we have IDZeus and Chinito PV in the final match and either Ambi Nash or FRP Shoot will get there as well. So we're gonna start first with Shoot to see who's gonna be the third player in the final match. Beat the boss. Round one. So here comes FRP Shoot and he's starting his raid at the top which is a smart decision to beat my base layout since there are two group bunkers at the bottom which could cause some problems for him. Then he's using the Berserk Barrel to speed up his troops and uses some cannoneers to clear out the buildings which are standing there. So clearly a big push he's doing there but we can clearly see that some cannoneers split up from the main group already which is the goal of the base layout. Also he's gonna be able to take down my stronghold since the cannoneers in his main push don't walk around the base yet. However he also didn't take out that cannon on the outside which is able to do some more damage on his troops and then finally the marauders move further into the center while the cannoneers decided to go further to the outside where my large explosive traps are waiting for them. This means we killed now most of his troops and because he has no cannoneers left we can expect this fight to end soon when he releases the bombardiers out of the troop bunker because he has no troops to counter them. So this leaves us here at the end with 60% damage. If he would have taken care of the buildings on the outside a little bit more, surely he would have gotten some more percentages but 2 stars are of course not too bad. The tournament tree tells us that for now this was the best attack I think in BTB but since that doesn't give him an advantage in this competition it is just the thing I want to mention here. On the other hand now MB Nash has to show off his skills to top that result and it's gonna be interesting to see how he performs against my base layout. Beat the boss. Round two. Alright here comes fight number 2 and MB Nash starts off quite smart by taking care of that cannon. I've said it before that cannon can deal some serious damage to healers and troops if you don't take care of it right in the beginning which he obviously is well aware of and he also prevents that troops start to move around the base through that. Now more action is gonna happen on top where he follows up with another group of marauders which is supported by healers and cannoneers. So we can see some similarities to shoots attack which means the one with the better approach from the top is gonna win here in the end so we can compare here quite well the skill level of both players. These cannoneers have no problems to take out all the towers which I had standing on top but fortunately the right group got already almost decimated by my traps but since he's using another method by attacking now from the other side on top as well everything is still open. A quite smart move then is the use of the fork barrel on the cannoneers which gives them a lot of time to destroy the stronghold and then the berserk barrels helps to destroy also the other surrounding buildings fast. Unfortunately for me then the minefield which I had between the gold bunkers did not take out the cannoneers which gives MB Nash the opportunity to get some more damage percentages but if you have counted properly he has no barrels left at this point which means the fight will end soon when the cannoneers reach the crystal spires and the dragon tower. So at this point MB Nash has already won but he didn't knew that at this point so he tries to get the maximum out of this fight by using his last archers to destroy some more buildings on the outside which are uncovered and with the troop camp being destroyed this fight comes to an end with 68% damage. This means we got here a new record in BTB where someone got a lot of damage on my base. A little bit too much for my ego but I always say with a good strategy you can beat every base. 
This means even though the FRP shoot delivered here a decent fight, it was not enough to pass this round and therefore MB Nash will move to the next stage and then we are left with one more episode until the great final match. Alright, here we are again at the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed this episode again and next episode will be quite interesting as well when we see the Stronghold 8 players fighting against a very unconventional base layout. Until then you can watch the previous episode of BTB to skip time. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more. This is it for me, have a great raid, peace out.